Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy X. We are just on a bit of that monster capturing montage. So we have done the fade, I did kill it off camera, we just have some small amounts of tidying up to do in the Meehan High Road. And then after that, we're going to go to the Josie High Road. But, as I say, I kind of cut these bits out because like, I literally had like three hours of footage to show you guys of me literally capturing all the different fiends, going back, double checking and things like that. But I don't really see like the entertainment value in it, but I kept some of it in just to kind of have a little bit of a chat with you guys just on the series and on how it's all been going. And I just really, I suppose, like starting back like at episode one in the playlist, like I was brand new to YouTube, brand new to all this editing and stuff, and like every minute of footage was like, I suppose like 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 a, like a newborn baby, I couldn't like be, be given to part with it or anything, and I wasn't wanting to cut anything, and I didn't want to cut any of like, um, you know, my audio or my dialogue or anything like that, so I suppose to then be at the stage now where I'm having hours of footage of like just capturing monsters and stuff and then being able to say no I can condense this down into you know a three four five minute clip of just a small little montage because that's all you guys really need to see in terms of like a guide like literally just go to the different zones in you know the Meehan High Road in the Killica Woods in Besaid and just put on your four times speed put on your auto battle even for these like easier battles and high encounter rate and you can literally blitz through this in 40 minutes to 50 minutes you know um but like where i'm at currently now um i'm literally like maxing out the sphere grid at this stage but as you can see we've got 10 of everything in the me and high road got everything done in besaid got everything done in Kilika, and you know we did the thunder planes earlier on in the series back way before um you know we even beat lady unaleska and next up on our list is just the Josie High Road and then B Canal. And once those two things are done, uh, we've basically completely completed everything. But as I say, I've now kind of just off camera for maybe about like a guts of like 10 hours. I've just been collecting the stat spheres for like end game stat maxing and things like that. And like while I can definitely like once we get to around that time, I can like give you guys kind of my explanation, my kind of breakdown on what I trained against, how I trained things. But like, I definitely wouldn't say I did it like optimally. I really think, you know, there's definitely some fine tuning and cut it on, but like this has been genuinely my first attempt at stat maxing in the game. So like I've literally gotten to the stage where I filled the sphere grid in such a way that like all my characters have quad nine HP, triple nine, MP and then max 255 in all their stats. So, I mean, it's just going to take a little while longer just to get every other character in the game to that level. But even if I can just get my main trio, that'll be great. On these little birdies, um, they were the hardest thing to find in the Jose High Road. Uh, but if you stick around that little pointy rock and kind of go from like the sunlight to the shadows, that's kind of where I found them spawning relatively more frequently you know like you see them there again and as i say you can kind of have a pen and paper and count them manually if you want but realistically your their battles are going that fast so just keep hammering on the auto and then once you see that like the capture limit's reached you can like move on and so the jose high road is technically that high road plus this area of the uh walk to guadalam with all the ochis and stuff so just collect a gong there and once you enter Guadalajara, we get a cutscene. You want to start something? Uh, if it would please you to harm a defenseless old man, then burn me, boil me, it matters not. Huh? Lord Seymour is gone. No lord rises to take his place. The Guado merely wait for sin to come and finish us off. Why should I care what you do to me? Oh, oh. If it meant rejoining Lord Jiskel and Lord Seymour, then your taking off my head would be the greatest kindness.
Yeah, so the Guado are just... They are not in a good way. Because um, obviously Lord Seymour has like died. They kind of acknowledge that. But Seymour is just like gone. He's not concerned with the Guado people. He has like other plans. He's literally like run rogue from Yevon. So he's like gone and like massacred the Ronso. Like it's wild. So he's obviously on a whole different end game. And is it just abandoning his people? But if we go back to the far plane, we get to see a cutscene with Lulu and Lady Ginnam, the summoner with Yojimbo. I'm still not the person I wanted to become. Not yet. I'll come back to let you know how things went. I hope I'll bring back good news. When Lord Gist was alive, Trommel. the Guado knew prosperity and honor. But now, we Guado wither and crumble. I myself could have done more to stop this. Forgive me, Lord Gisco. I suppose it's like a deeper you know, dialogue on changes in leadership and when, you know, bad leaders like Seymour rise to power, the societies in which they seek to rule over crumble. But again, we're just in a montage of monster capturing, but they're just interesting little cutscenes you can get. But right now we're going to pop back to the monster arena, collect our prizes and then move on to Beaconel. So, with all the mixtures of different flans that we've captured between Gagazette and, you know, Besaid, we get 60 twin stars, which are super useful. I think they give the party zero MP cost when you use them with the use command. I forgot I even had the auto battler on until, like, way too, way too long into it. And I went, oh, wait. So, the jumbo flan is literally immune to physical attacks, so you just need high magic to to beat him. And he actually drops magic spheres, so I had lots of fun farming against him with Aeons. And then I just knew myself, we aren't in the stage to like fight these creatures, so I just got them logged in the monster capture, got the um, few bits, and then started capturing in Beaconel. They range from the big monsters that are like tough to beat down to the rare monsters like the cactars and then just your other monsters that are just annoying without status protection and stuff. Um, but yeah, like literally just put on your four times speed, your high encounter rate and uh, just capture away, you know? But the cactars are a rare enemy, but we're actually also here for Riku's Celestial Sigil uh, for her Celestial Weapon to reach max power. And so, basically, the rare Cactar monster is not going to be any issue to uh, find. But also, keep in mind, I've been having Riku and the guys fight with a Distill Mana weapon, so anytime they get attacked, or they attack a creature, it will drop MP spheres, which allow me to basically level up uh, Anima's MP super, super high, which we're going to need when we're fighting Jumbo Flan, who we saw earlier in the episode. But yeah, I'm just super happy that I've kind of gotten to the stage now where I'm able to like have max stats of my characters and I actually feel like I'm going to achieve that that kind of goal in the 100% run, which like seemed like such a pipe dream way back in like the early episodes. But I just want to thank everybody for all their support of the series and like, oh, like one of my episodes received over 100 views and I was like, oh my God, like this is amazing. Like I, I honestly was blown away by just even the engagement, you know? And so I just hope that, they, that uh, you know, when we get to the final part and this kind of series is concluded that like, you know, I can I can carry on some viewership forward, but there's a sandstorm just ahead of us into that little area there, 
And basically we have to play hide and seek with cactars. And uh, that's why I was saying that if you have capture weapons, you're basically getting access to 10 cactars um, super easy. Because what you have to do is you have to go find the cactar based on the vague description the stone tablet gives you. You play like the traffic light game where it's like stop, go. If they're looking away, you can move. But if they look towards you, you have to stop. And then if you win it, you get a prize. If you lose it, you don't quite get a prize. But like unlike every other Celestia weapon, like this one has like the least requirements. Just do the mini game. If you succeed, great. If you don't succeed, whatever. It doesn't matter. But it's just uh, completing this this task and you get the sigil, it's perfect. Um, literally nothing else to it. So we found the first one. He is in the oasis by the water. I mean, it's giving us like a whole explanation of like, you just sneak up to the cactar, try not to be seen. And what's interesting is that the cactars seem to speak our bed. So if we didn't have all of the... <laughs> but yeah, you have to be really, really, like, sensitive with not moving. But if you didn't have all the ABBA primers, you wouldn't know what they're saying. But, like, we have all the ABBA primers now. So, needle time. They are speaking our bed. And yeah, we hear the little ding. And we basically get a forced fight. But if you have a capture weapon, they're just regular cactars. It's not as if they're any way more empowered or like a unique enemy cactar. So you can just capture 10 cactars, get that maxed out, and you don't have to be traipsing around the desert to try and find them. But yeah, you basically get the sphere. If you get, like, to successfully get all of them, you get, like, a better reward at the end. But I'm only here by the sigil. Bring it back, and then you unlock the next kind of hint as to where to find the next cactar. And on and on, this will go uh, for the other, uh, like, 10 gatekeepers. But a couple of them are in pairs, so it's not so, so bad. But, again, I hope people don't mind the fact that I, like, cut out all the monster capturing. Like, I'm not live streaming it, so I kind of figured, oh, like, it won't really matter. And I think the happy medium was... Again, trailing through three hours of footage of me just capturing all these monsters and just giving a little like montage and it kind of lets me chat to you guys and engage my audience a little bit, which is good. But what I'm most excited for now is kind of getting to the stage where I can kind of go through the whole monster arena, like show my max stats, but be like, here is the order I went in, here's the monsters I chose to fight in this specific order to get these specific stats in this particular way. And, yeah, like, even when it came to, like, getting, like, the Venus sigil, getting all the blitz balls on, which, again, like, I kind of showed a rough guide as to, like, get brother, pass back and forth, do the cheesy strategy of staying behind the goalkeeper. But, like, I have actually gotten all the Celestia weapons all fully powered up, so, like, it's just, I don't know, I'm just really kind of happy that, like, the end is coming in sight of the series and I suppose when you kind of start something like this in the beginning when you're only beginning YouTube it's kind of wild to me that like I've actually you know potentially I'm going to finish finish the series and get all the achievements and kind of hopefully have an entertaining and informative guide for you guys to to play along with you know Oh yeah, I left on four times speed here's me talking about like a guy that like is super useful and I like mess up the first bit of the race. So yeah, turn off your your four times speed. Um, but yeah, like I'm literally at the stage where like today I managed to get one of my characters like max HP, 225 and everything, including magic, accuracy, evasion and luck. So like the sphere grid is literally set up to maximize everyone's stats and then like one of the last achievements typically in the game that not many people get is literally filling the entire sphere grid with like every you know type of sphere and having every character activate everything 
Um, now, obviously, I could have tried to go for a break HP limit setup and, like, have enough HP to bring it up to, like, the five nines, you know? Or six nines. But, I mean, I can still put more HP spheres in it, but I'm not... I, I would... I just, for my personal enjoyment and insanity, I'm not sure which it is more accurate, but I just prefer to have... Uh, 225 in everything, including luck, evasion, and accuracy. Um, most people say you don't need evasion and accuracy. Like that obviously clears up space for you to then put much more, more space into HP if you just have luck at 255. But as I said, if you're going to have luck at 255, like the amount of time and energy that that's going to take up, um, like. It's as easy just to do that seven times anyway, especially if you're trying to get that other achievement to fill it up for everybody. So if you have to have five luck in your sphere grid, you're going to have to use that for everybody. So I'd rather have two for five in all the stats. But um, like I said, with the Cactar gatekeepers being fought, we've already reached our limit on Cactar capturing. And as I say... A really just relaxed sigil to get, to be honest. Like, it's not stressful at all. Like, especially when there's no prerequisite to, like, you have to succeed in all these traffic light games, or you don't get it, or you have to retry it, or, you know, you just... Find them, do them, doesn't matter, you know? But let me know in the comments, are you guys like, do you bother with stat max at all? Do you think break HP limit is the better way to go? Do you think... Like, do you think, no, I just prefer to break the HP limit? Don't need to worry about luck or accuracy or evasion when luck is super high. And like, what's your kind of go-to team? Because I would like to challenge some of the Dark Aeons with different characters. Because I mean, I feel like the go-to is Waka for attack reels, Riku for mix, Tidus for his multi-attack overdrives, Yuna for Aeons. But like, you never really see like... Oren, Kamari, Lulu, like, taking on Dark Aeons. So I, I, I'm wanting to, like, max them out. So for at least one or two of them, we could, like, let them kind of have a moment to shine and and show off them with max stats, their max celestial weapons and everything. Because, I mean, like, Lulu having, like, multi-flare, you know, as an overdrive or, like, multi-ultima, like, that could be cool. Like, with her magic booster and everything else. I mean, like, because, like, I've been looking up, like, you know, different ways of fighting the Dark Aeons and other optimal ways and everything else. And, like, I've seen some that are, like, if you give magic booster items to multiple members with, ma with max magic, um, like, you can basically do Ultima to, like, take down um, certain Aeons, like, in really effective ways. And like that, I kind of put the time and the effort into maxing all the stats, so I want to kind of have fun with the battles and not just kind of, you know, just have a situation where it's like, oh, like, I'm just going to do what every single other, <laughs> um, like, playthrough and guide has done, you know? Because, like, this game has been out for ages. I am by no means the one and only um, guide out there. Um... But I'm also not going to use Zen, Zen Motto. As fun as that is, you know, Yojimbo's insta-kill overdrive is uh, not quite the vibe. And just a little note on this one, you have to leave the area or this little cactar won't be here. So it says like, oh, he's playing in the dunes, but like you can't just go to this dune straight away. He won't be here. So you have to leave and then move back with the map transition. 
And I suppose it's just funny how... Like, it's just funny how in these particular scenarios that they've always just taken assets oh from other areas and just put them in here. So, like, you are the best, Waka. But they've obviously taken the idea of, like, okay, they've done, like, the closure of trials. They've done, like, you know, Tidus holding an orb animation kind of vibe. And uh, they just, like, they just brought that in and been like, ah, oh, we can just put it in Beacon L. We haven't used the color green. Green is Riku's color. It'll be grand, you know? And what's super interesting is that these enemies can't be captured because these enemies are specifically like little mini bosses of um, of Beacon L. They only appear in Beacon L and there's no, there's just not 10 of them. There's just a finite um, amount of them. So just an interesting tidbit, even though you think, oh, like that was an enemy type we fought. It's like, it's specifically like a mini boss. So it doesn't, it can't be captured. Much like Unaleska couldn't be captured in our previous encounter with her. But with this sigil gotten, we only have Waka's left to get. And I mean, we've finished off Beacon Isle Island's capturing, which means we've Waka's sigil. And then after that, the rest of our capturing is in the Omega dungeon, as well as another area that we haven't unlocked yet. But what's super funny is that the Cactar got onto the airship. And it's just mad how in canon, like when we asked to be dropped off places, the airship just then hovers. So the airship is on top of Kilika, or it's over Besaid, or it's in like Beacon L. But basically, you go there, you go to where you fought Evre, so go up to the like outer outer area of the ship. And at the very tail end, we have the final Cactar. Because once we beat this guy, we immediately find the very last one. But this one's really trippy and really wibbly wobbly but yeah it just i like the fact that it kind of shows yeah the airship is actually flying docking and letting you like explore a particular area and it's just up off screen and the save point just lets you like rise like the cactar back up to the <laughs> but yeah the the camera angles make me nauseous it's not nice And then he falls off the ship. One of the only like cutscenes with the skybox, which is interesting. And again, we have the orb here. But then the texture doesn't load the airship, which is funny. But then again, you just run, bring it back to here straight away. And then it says, oh, the last guy's always behind you. And so it instantly spawns the final gatekeeper. And then once you've done this, like at this stage, I was like, oh, just let me be finished with these mini games. But obviously, if you end up getting all of the personalized orbs, you get like much better prizes. But I didn't do that. <laughs> so I'm getting you 100% of like the game complete and I'm not gonna try and 100% every single little challenge. If in your mind I failed before I started, that's fair enough. But the objective was the sigil. I got the sigil with only like two failures. I don't think it's particularly bad. But once you put in all the different stones, you just get like a little sad explanation that like we have killed all of these cactars 
the seal protecting this area is now broken. They're all gone for good. And once you click through all this, you get to go into the little crater, collect your prize being Riku Sigil. And then we're just going to finish up the episode with running back to Makalania, powering it up to full. And next episode, I believe we're going to be progressing a bit into the story, doing a bit more. But we will 100% be doing more Blitzball. That is definitely in our future to get Waka's remaining reels and getting the chance to unlock the Jupiter Sigil. But yeah, we did fairly okay and our prize is then a Mega Elixir. And then back to Maglania Woods, we're going to power it up. And that's where we're going to leave our episode for today. Thanks guys, appreciate it. See you next time.